Know the game. ESPN presents Profiles. My racing career, my greatest moment, probably, uh, you know, obviously winning the championship at uh, Laguna Seca. It's the same race that Jen already won with the past. That was the first real celebration we had uh, as a race team, and together with Zanardi and, and, uh, and winning the championship for me, that was a very, very special moment. Tonight, Fights on the Deuce is presented by Brewery Fresh Budweiser, the undisputed, undefeated king of beers. This Bud's for you. And in part by Just for Men. Just for Men blends away gray hair in five minutes. Looks so natural, no one can tell. And by Western Union Money Transfer, the fastest way to send money worldwide. Well, we are at the Soaring Eagle Casino in... Mount Pleasant, Michigan. Glad you can join us for Friday Night Fights on the Deuce. And Teddy, uh, very, very nice people here at the Soaring Eagle. They have made our stay very, very pleasant. Uh, Bob Buell, Dave Martin in charge of the entertainment division has done a great job putting this package together. Oh, it's a beautiful location, beautiful setting. Real surreal, real peaceful area. And the casino is a different kind of casino. It feels like you're in somebody's home. It doesn't feel like you're going to go and lose your money. Here are the numbers in round two. Another dominant round for Jefferson. And Jefferson landing only 11 of 60 jabs. 29 of 85 power shots. As we go inside the numbers with Bob Canobio and Saul Avilar controls of CompuBox tonight. This is a case where Derek Jefferson, even though he's the taller guy, probably beat Foster anyway, even inside. But he has to be careful he doesn't pull straight back. A couple left hands by Foster on the chin of Jefferson. When you're tall, you can take advantage of that, but that can be a disadvantage, too. You can be a big target if you're pulling back tall. Your shorter opponent can follow you like Foster did over there. That's Foster's best shot. Try to get Jefferson to back out straight and follow him with the left hook. Like that. At that time, Jefferson was smart. He kept that right hand attached to his side, side of his head. When it comes down to conditioning, even if Jefferson fights inside, which I think is the wrong way for him, obviously with a shorter Foster, he'll probably get to Foster as the fight goes on. But he should fight like he is now, on the outside, where he's getting full extension on his punches and making Foster make mistakes to try to get back. A couple of Don't right hands. Oh, good right hand by Jefferson. Hurt Foster. He's doing good work right now. He's getting good extension on his punches, Jefferson. That's what he shouldn't be doing. He shouldn't be in too close where he allows Foster to smother him. Force is going to look to do a lot of smothering. Force has quit in a fight before. I only mention that because he's not in the top shape here. When a guy's not in top shape and he starts taking punishment like this, you start thinking about those kind of things. And he took the fight on Tuesday. He wasn't scheduled to be on this card and he fought six weeks ago. Good combination from Jefferson into a knee goes Foster. In the the fight I'm talking about that Foster quit was back in 96 with Jeff Wooden, who's 14 and 2. After the eighth round, Foster didn't come out. Well, Foster gets up here in round number three. Dominant round for Derek Jefferson. He goes to the body. Well, Foster's shown some heart here. No doubt about that. Digging away is Jefferson. Foster missed with that looping left hook. This, this is where Jefferson just has to make sure he doesn't smother himself. Good right hand to the body. Jefferson should look for an uppercut here. Foster makes the round. Cool and groovy TV, make it nice and easy. Yes, Optus, yes. Movies that'll move you, music that'll groove you. Yes, Optus, yes. Cool dudes, hot boots, it's looking sunny. Big bucks, neat tucks, make it some money. All this good stuff, all intersected. Aren't you glad that you got connected? One word, one word, you got the best. Yes, Optus, yes. 
from the makers of Homicide and sent elsewhere. In Emerald City, we got rules. We tell you when to sleep, when to pit. Emmy Award nominated. In us, the gods like the cages you walk away. The year's most controversial new show. As of today, I run out. <laughs> For the first hard-hitting time on television. Ah. 8.30 Tuesday on O. Well, when you've worked to get your opponent in the corner, what do you do? You close the show. You blind them with the jab, shoot the right hand. That's what Derek Jefferson did. Foster will come out for round four. Jefferson has dominated this fight from the get-go. Only thing Jefferson has to worry about or watch for is pulling straight back as we talked about before, Bob. He's a taller guy. That's good if you use it. If you pull back, that's bad. You can give the guy a lot to hit. In the last round, Jefferson outlanded Foster 37-7. Landed 40% of his shot. Jefferson must not pull straight back where Foster can follow him with a hook pull a desperate punch out because already forces a desperate situation here having been dropped in the last round you can see Forster tried to time him that time just missed with the right hand that's why you don't want to throw anything too wide you give you holding a chance to slip one inside also Jefferson has to watch he uses his height don't smother himself get full extension on his punches to get full power on his punches also it will keep Foster from tying him up and stopping him from continuing. And by getting full extension on his punches, by punching at the right distance, Jefferson will force Foster to fall in if Foster wants to do anything because he's a shorter man. Most of Jefferson's bouts end quickly, but not the greatest competition. He says he is ready to take on all comers at this point in his career. He says, I want to find out how good I am. I tell you, he thinks in there a little bit. I just saw him, saw him throw a nice sneaky left hook before Jefferson that is. And then he threw a right to the body and followed it with a right to the jaw. He's pretty sound technically for a guy who's really not all that experienced. Started late in the amateurs at 23 years of age. Good left hand by Jefferson and that's it for Foster. Foster's taking a knee right there, and he, it's not a fair catch. He doesn't, I think he said that's enough. Referee Frank Garza said that's enough, too. Once Foster spun around and went to the knee. So Derek Jefferson picks up his 21st win, and Melvin Foster loses again. He has now lost uh, six times in his last eight. He's been stopped five times in that stretch, and... Maybe he is washed up. Derek Jefferson took care of business. Kelly, you were impressed with the way Jefferson mixed up his punch. Yeah, I, I like the way he stepped with his man, too. Here he faints a little bit, tries to get his man to move. Then he follows him as he's stepping back with the left hook. And then Foster does the rest. Right here, he follows. You can see Jefferson followed his man. He made up space. In other words, if he would have threw the punch to catch the guy, he would have missed. He stepped and then threw. Made a new starting position. So his man was stepping back. He recognized that. He stepped with him. So he lost four weeks ago to Garing Lane. Now he loses to Derek Jefferson. Derek Jefferson picks up his 17th stoppage. And his first half. He's a very defensive, orientated boxer. And the question for Audley Harrison is, will he 